I think the one thing that I've been very consistent talking about on my podcast and when I talk to other people is most people shouldn't invest in industrial real estate. I am clearly very excited about industrial real estate and I, and I hope that shows. It shows. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> no, no secret there. Yeah. I think that most people should actually avoid it. And I say that because hmm. there's a lot of risk that comes with industrial real estate that isn't present in other asset classes. So you go out and buy a 20 unit multifamily building. If you're buying that in a good area and vacancy rates are low and there's population growth and the economic fundamentals look good, your downside risk is very low, like, like 10% maybe. And, and most of that would actually probably be systemic risk beyond what happens in that little market. It might be like a gl global interest rate adjustment or something that happens in the world. In industrial, your downside risk is huge. Mm. And it's really the epitome of dumb money. Dumb money that can get into industrial real estate and they they listen to me talk and they say, well, this, this sounds really exciting for all the reasons that you talked about. And they want to go out and buy a property and they find one. And maybe it's, a, I'll, I'll use a hypothetical example, which is very common. They see a building for sale that's got three years left on the lease and the company that's been in there has been in there for 25 years and it looks like they're getting a good return and they go through some basic due diligence. They buy the property, hoping that that tenant renews. Three years comes up, the tenant decides that they're going to move. They do a hard look at that asset and they figure out that that asset was built specifically for that company that was in there and it's going to cost them a considerable amount of capital expenditure to retrofit it for the next tenant. Mm. Maybe you can't even replace that income stream. Maybe the next tenant that comes in won't value it as high as that previous one did. So you could be in a situation where you have to pay to retrofit it and then also accept a lower rate. Now your property has gone from a value of X to a percentage of X. And I have seen this happen. I've seen this happen numerous times with that dumb money where people just aren't prepared to spend all the time they need to spend. They're not willing to spend years learning everything about the industry, the business, the, the demand drivers, the supply intricacies. They, they're not willing to actually invest in all that time and they make a mistake and that mistake can be catastrophic. I don't see that in other asset classes, office notwithstanding. I think office is, is, is a different conversation altogether, but I don't see that in multifamily, even in retail. If you're buying a good property in a good neighborhood, you're not going to see that same risk of having to accept lower rate from a tenant because the building was specifically built for somebody in the past. That's why I say that the average investor should steer away from industrial, either look to become a limited partner or invest in a REIT or joint venture with someone that's very experienced that's already done it. But to try and go about it solo, I think your risk far exceeds the upside. That's one thing I, I like putting on record is that as enthusiastic as I am about industrial, I don't think it's for everybody. In fact, yeah. I, I think it's not for most people. What I'm hearing you saying is everyone who's interested in industrial because they have listened to your podcast or follow you on X should continue to listen to your podcast and follow you on X for at least four to five years and take notes before they jump in and decide to go industrial and smash the like button along the way too. Yeah. yeah that's smash right. that like button, baby. <laughs> but if you were to add anything else to somebody who's like, I love industrial like you, Maybe I don't know as much, but I want to go into it. What, how would, how would you, what advice would you give them to start? What should they do that first, that first year or two as they're gaining their knowledge? Yeah, it's a great question. And I would say it's, it's an, it's a field where you need to be passionate about. If you're going to be successful in anything, you should be, you should have a passion about it. Sure. But it, you do have to take a long-term approach with it. And what I would say to someone starting out and specifically for someone in brokerage, but even for someone looking to invest in it, follow two paths simultaneously. The first path is that you need to become an expert in what industrial real estate is. You have to study that extensively. And there's some great resources out there. There's a couple guys on Twitter right now, they're talking about uh, electricity. One guy's an engineer for sure. I don't know what, uh, what the other guys are. They're putting out some awesome videos just about power uh, in an industrial capacity. Mm -hmm. So there are resources out there. That's Path number one. Who you are those guys? I'll, I'll send it to you guys so you can add it to the show notes. Yeah, yeah perfect. Uh, 
but that's path one is you have to commit to becoming an expert in industrial real estate. So that's knowing everything about buildings, knowing everything about what tenants want in a building, know what potential pitfalls can be in a building, know, know all those things so that you could avoid making that mistake that I talked about, about buying a building that perhaps won't release at the same rate. You've got to be able to make sure that you're mitigating all those risks. And the only way to do that is you have to become a bona fide expert in industrial real estate. Mm -hmm. Second path is you have to understand your local market as well as anybody in your market. Ideally, you are the expert. Nobody knows as much about industrial real estate as you are. Nobody knows what more than me. Are. I know the most. <laughs> 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 the best you need to be the best yeah. uh so every deal that's in the market every company that's in the market uh, deals that just got sold leases that just happened trends in the market new developments coming in the pipeline new zoning rules that are coming you need to know everything about that market so that you can combine those two things simultaneously when you're talking to either a client or when you're looking at a property you now know everything about industrial real estate and what it is and you know everything that's happening in your market you combine those two things and start talking to as many people as you can you're unstoppable man like that mm. is you are unstoppable and that, that's not an easy thing you don't accomplish either one of those things in a couple months i actually read more now than i did when i started 20 years ago so it's a never-ending thing you're mm -hmm. going to want to try and get up to a baseline as quickly as you can you recognize that that is something that is a lifelong pursuit of becoming an expert in what industrial real estate is and understanding what's happened in the market but you do those two things you stick to it you put your put your head down and you commit to doing those two things you are unstoppable mm. yeah if anybody wants to see an example other than chad of this see bob knackle oh yeah the best right. he's the goat yeah, yeah. He's the goat. He's the goat. All right, let's have a pop quiz. Yeah! If you like that, you can watch another clip right here. If you want to watch the full episode, right here. Do it.